the Fed is expected to keep peak rates through the entire year of 2023. This news has crushed the hopes of markets, including the housing market, as many had planned for interest rates to kind of take a step down mid-2023. That coupled with the fact that many said that the Fed would pivot since we've seen inflation come down ever so slightly and we've seen major layoffs as well as people starting to pull back their discretionary spending. Now, according to a news release on Bloomberg.com, their recent December poll indicates that 81% of the economists believe that we will enter a U.S. recession within the next 24 months. Thanks for watching this video, guys. We're going to dive deep into what these economists are saying, as well as my predictions of where we're going in 2023. Now, you may be one of the many that's already starting to feel the pain that Jay Powell had indicated in many of his press conferences, where he said a soft landing is what they're hoping for. But, you know, I mean, we may end up seeing that big crash landing that everybody feared. Now, I personally know of many people that have lost their jobs already in recent layoffs and actually as recently as yesterday. And I think this is just the tip of the iceberg where companies are really trying to get in front of this, preparing for you know, what may be a long downturn in our economy. And they're doing this by, you know, cutting jobs, cutting costs, reassessing their, you know, their books. We've already seen where a lot of consumers have pulled back their spending and, you know, so sales are down and costs are up. And I think many people do believe that we're going to have a major U.S. downturn as the Fed has not been shy in stating that, you know, he's committed to really doing whatever it takes to tame this 40-year high inflation, which by the way, housing has a major impact on the high inflation that we've seen over the last couple of years. And it's, it's known as shelter inflation as far as the U.S. government is concerned. And I say, why, why, why didn't we stop this housing inflation earlier? And I'll tell you my opinion. It's because the Fed and many of the economists and, and the government's analysts, they're looking at skewed backdated information when they're trying to assess inflation. Let's take a look at an article that I found on whitehouse.gov that is dated on September 9th, 2021. So this article is talking about shelter inflation, which by the way, shelter inflation makes up a third of our inflationary buckets, also including food and energy. Because of the way shelter costs enter into the CPI, these increases in owned home and rental costs have not yet contributed much to overall inflation. Our analysts, however, suggest that these higher shelter prices are likely to soon show up more clearly in the monthly CPI, potentially adding several more basis points to monthly inflation than they do now. As we show, some of this acceleration would simply represent a return to normal pre-pandemic shelter contributions to inflation. And we note that these housing price dynamics are included in inflation forecasts, including our own, which shows overall price growth decelerating in coming quarters. Well, there you have it. The government sources, including our own analysts, didn't see the housing market freight train barreling down the tracks. Okay, so now let's go back to the Bloomberg.com article and take a look at this chart. Now, it's said that the FOMC's median projection for the Fed rate is expecting to show the policy benchmark peaking at 4.9% in 2023. This reflects a 4.75 to 5% target range. And that's up from the target range that we had earlier in September of this year. Now, in this chart, let's just take a look at how the survey has changed in just two months from October to now. The new projection from June to December of 2023 is that the Fed will maintain the peak of 5% and keep it there for a sustained period of time. Now, this chart predicts that the Fed won't drop the rate until mid-year of 2024. And according to this chart, it shows that it will only then drop down to 4%. I don't have to tell you what's going on now where we're looking at rates even lower than that at 3.78%. 
we're already seeing a major reckoning to the housing market. I mean, people can't afford mortgages now, you know, buying a house at the current pricing. Yet they're saying that by mid 24, we're still going to be higher than where we are right now. Now, Let's dive deeper into this Bloomberg article if you can stand any more. Chair Jerome Powell has said he's willing for the economy to suffer some more pain to lower inflation near 40-year highs, and that should be a bit more visible in the new forecast. So let's take a deeper look at what these 44 economists stated during Bloomberg's December 2nd through 7th poll. And by the way, this is all in advance of next week's FOMC meeting on the 13th and the 14th of December. So in this chart, you can see that it is reflective of 2022, and it kind of takes us to the longer term, right, beyond 2025. And what I really want to focus on is the federal funds rate, uh, because, you know, two things. Number one, there's been a lot of talk in our industry where the Fed pivoting, uh, the 10 year treasury will come down uh, with a little bit more consumer confidence and, you know, people will be investing in the treasury less and um, and then mortgage rates would actually come down. And in fact, many have said they expect something like in the fours in the first quarter of 23. And if you take a look at this chart and we focus in the federal funds rate, the prediction is that in 2023, it's going to be much higher, that 5%. Fed rate that we talked about earlier, um, you know, kind of peaking in 2023 and maintaining that the entire year. You know, in my opinion, this is going to continue to drive down home costs. And a lot of experts are now saying we could see easily 20% price cuts in certain markets across the U.S. The other thing that I want to focus here, guys, is the unemployment rate. Because as you can see, it is expected to increase significantly, which is no surprise. I mean, with consumer debt becoming more expensive, you know, things like credit cards, revolving loans, car loans, things like that, utility costs going up, and really, you know, people just being able to barely afford necessities, a lot of these companies are going to feel the pain and they're going to end up cutting jobs like we've already seen on a very small scale, still tens and tens of thousands of employees that have been laid off in the recent months. And I believe that's just the beginning. Finally, predictions of a recession are imminent. So I'm not sure where your thoughts are on what I'm talking about right now, or really your thoughts on the overall U.S. economy, and it would help me, and I'd appreciate it if you would drop those comments below after watching this video. And by the way, if it's okay for me to suggest, if you haven't already done so, if you could smash that subscribe button and hit the alert bell, you'll know every time I upload content like this. Now back to the final analysis. Of the 44 economists that Bloomberg polled, 81% said recession, 16% said a hard landing, but not a recession, and only 2% guys said that we'd have a soft landing. And what I say is that 2%, wow, what planet are they on? They're just maybe in this tiny little bubble that's floating around in la-la land. So does it sound like I'm talking doom and gloom or does it sound like I'm just trying to help you realize that we are waking up from a two-year hiatus from reality? And whether you agree with me or disagree that we're headed into a much-needed correction, we're committed to educating buyers, sellers, landlords, and tenants on how to prepare on what I believe is some rough seas ahead. And now before we go, I want to share just five tips that has helped to keep me moving and navigating the ups and downs of the economy over the last 33 years of being a business owner. Number one, we will make it through tough times. And number two, recessions, depressions, panics, and yes, pandemics have been noted through our entire history of our United States of America. Number three, the media always seems to do a great job of talking us in and out of these difficult times. So do pay attention to the alarmists because there is a lot of power in the press. And number four, we can always find ways to better ourselves and increase our creative capabilities in challenging times. And number five, plan your work and work your plan. Turn off those phones and build a budget Set some goals for yourself and talk to those people that you love the most. 
And after all, it's not a bad idea to trim some fat from your budget, cut some costs where you can, and realign your expectations to a much less stressful level. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you want to help me spread this video out to more people, go ahead and hit that thumbs up, the like button. It will help me do just that. See you next time. Sax Realty, Maryland Broker, number 607720, office number 443-318-4514, equal housing opportunity.